you know, I've always enjoyed walking along this section of the Fulton Clyde Canal, um, not far from the from Port Dundas. There's just a, a little number of kind of bits and bobs left over from the old days, like the, the bonded whisky warehouses that are now flats and um, just the odd sort of bit of wall and things. And you know, every time I pass this bit right here, I've always wondered what this wall was once a part of because um, it's got little windows in it and even a door. These are all bricked up now. It's just that this wall that's left, clearly it was once a building and I just always wondered what on earth it was. I am the wanderer. And in fact, it used to be uh, part of uh, maltings uh, or, or malt, malt barns where they would um, make malted barley for the brewing industry. And it was owned by um, Hugh Baird and Sons who had a brewery just on the other side of the canal. That brewery was called the Great Canal Brewery. And they had a number of other maltings in this area. Uh, Rock Villa, Malt Barns here, and uh, the, just not that far in that direction along the canal, uh, the Great uh, Canal Maltings, I, I think it was called, and you can see all these on old maps. And you know, the, the, the brewing industry in the old days in Glasgow was, um, it was quite complicated. <laughs> uh, the, the number of uh, brewers that there were, and the number of times they chopped and changed building and location and what have you. So in, in this video I can really only scratch the surface and give you a kind of brief idea of the of the picture of the breweries in, in the old days. And um, it, the history of the brewing industry in Glasgow and indeed all of Scotland started with buildings like this. It all began with maltings. Breweries in Glasgow and elsewhere in the UK really only sprang up in the 18th century. Before then, pubs and inns brewed their own beer using malted barley supplied by maltsters. As time went by, many of the maltsters reckoned they could increase their profit by making their own beer and selling it to inns and taverns. And so the brewing industry began. This photo, taken by John R. Hume, shows the Great Canal Maltings, also owned by Baird and Company, on Garscube Road in 1966. You can see it behind the Hopepool Works. This is another view of it from the canal. It wasn't that long ago that many industries lined the canal, and today, where once existed so much industrial activity, there is now absolutely nothing. Behind the old Basin Tavern, also owned by Baird's, was Baird's Great Canal Brewery. I've been unable to find any images, but old maps reveal its extent. You can see that it sat in a wedge of land bordered by Baird's Bray, the canal and Postle Road. It's still known as a brewery on the 1909 Order and Survey map, but is not shown on the 1932 map. The only building there at that time being a picture theatre. The brewery therefore probably ceased operation and was demolished in the first quarter of the 20th century. The company Hugh Baird and Sons eventually closed their brewing operation here, probably in the first quarter of the 20th century, and focused entirely on malting. So successful were they that they still exist, under the name Baird's Malt. Of course, the Great Canal Brewery was not the only great brewery in Glasgow. It's time to visit Anderston. Well, this is the Anderson area 
of Glasgow. It's now part of Glasgow. It used to be a place in its own right. In the 19th century, this area was absolutely jam-packed with industry. You had businesses of every shape and size imaginable. Um, and now it's not, that's all gone, and it's now an area that's at a chocolate block with housing, and more housing getting built as I speak. And this, almost right here, was an, where another of uh, Glasgow's old breweries uh, used to be. I suppose in theory, at the time that it was here, it was it wasn't really. Uh, it was part of Anderson, it wasn't part of Glasgow, but you know, eventually oh, this all became a part of Glasgow. Um, this was called uh, um, the Anderson Brewery, strangely enough. Um, I think in a lot of uh, instances it was called the, the Large Anderson Brewery. Not quite as grand a title as the Great Anderson Brewery, <laughs> but um, I, I think in later years it. it bore that tag to distinguish it from uh, another later brewery that also was called Anderson Brewery. I think that was up in uh, Bishop Street just off Anderson Cross. But this was uh, the Anderson Brewery went under a number of owners over the year. Uh, originally Murdoch uh, Warwick and Company. And you know in this instance we have the luxury of some drawings dating to I think 1827 showing the brewery and it's great to have that you know to see what these buildings look like at such an early period in their existence of course the problem with drawings is that there's sometimes a wee bit of artistic license goes on you're not sure if what you're looking at is real um, I think the encouraging thing about these drawings is that it, it, if you look at the drawing you can see that uh, a staircase at the front of the building leading into what I presume to be a grand entrance and when you look at um, I can't remember if it's one of the early town plans or, or maps or ordinary survey maps, but you can see that staircase. So that's a pretty good indication that at least some of the, the drawing was real and it proves to say it was probably all very accurate. But nevertheless, I, can, I, I, I always wondered what it looked like. This was an old brewery, it went back to I think the 1760s or something, you know. The history of the brewing industry can become very complicated with breweries often changing hands and names. This particular Anderson Brewery is thought to have been established in 1762 by Murdoch Warwick and Company, and it is listed in an old directory of 1789. In Peter Fleming's map of 1807, the brewery is clearly shown and known as Cowan and Company's Brewery. Potential confusion arises when we move east on the same map and see another rectangular arrangement of buildings around a courtyard with the label Rob Cowan. Although not labelled as such, this is in fact another early brewery located in Grahamston on what is now Hope Street. The second statistical account makes the picture even more complicated. Soon after the Union, Mr Crawford of Milton erected an extensive brewery at Grahamston, afterwards the property of Mr Robert Cowan. The brewing trade was carried on extensively here at an early period by the Anderson Brewery Company and latterly by Messrs Blackstock, Baird, Struthers, Buchanan, Hunter, etc. Add to all that the smaller Anderson Brewery in Bishop Street, again occupied by various brewers like M.D. Dawson and Company, but potentially by a previous John Cowan. My God, but where are all these Cowans coming from? To cut a long story short, there were a lot of brewers in old Glasgow, many listed in 18th century directories and sometimes shown on maps like William Pinkerton, a brewer and maltster on the west side of Dunlop Street, James Muir, a brewer and retailer of strong beer and ale on the west side of Salt Market, and Robert Luke's brewery beside a great tannery on the banks of the Mollendiner Burn. Everything was great in the old days. These early brewers would have supplied taverns like the Leaping Horse and the Trongate, or the Saracen's Head Inn. 
This was an old brewery, it went back to I think the 1760s or something, you know. What did it really look like? Because it would have been here before a lot of the other stuff that was built in the Victorian period was here that would have sat. Not really in isolation because there was other uh, industries nearby. I think there was a pottery, all sorts of stuff going on because the River Clyde was just there and ideal for shifting stuff backwards and forwards. And I, I sort of wondered whether in, in some of the aerial photographs that have been taken of this area uh, in the 1940s, I just wondered whether you'd be able to see it. Because I think this brewery was probably demolished in the 1960s, or the building was demolished in the 1960s. It was no longer a brewery at that stage, but I think the building was still here. It was probably just get rid of them when they started building the Kingston Bridge, I mean, motorway and such like. It lasted that long, you know. And I just wondered if I could see it in some of these aerial photographs. And you can. Um, in some of these aerial, pho aerial photographs I'm about to show you, you'll see it, I'm not sure if you can see it behind me, but the, there is a, a row of the housing there. Now, uh, that housing faces onto Cheapside Street, but the, the back garden on this side of that row of housing uh, is on Warwick Street, and the building just to the left of th that row of housing, you can see along with the housing on some of these maps, and that gives you a good idea of where... <laughs> things are because it's sometimes hard to know what streets are what and you can see that and in some of the aerial shots you can also see the old uh, Bill's on Bakery and again it just gives you a good handle on where things are and you can see this brewery a range of buildings around an old courtyard and you just know by looking at them that that is much older than anything else in the photograph Well, this is the east end of Glasgow, the Barris Market area. This is Ross Street, at the foot of which is a Gallagate. And right here was another of Glasgow's very early breweries, John Struthers Brewery. We used to sit in this block uh, of, of uh, land between Ross Street, Gallagate, and wherever the other two streets are. And it was also really not that far away from another of the early breweries in the city, um, Luke's Brewery, I've forgotten the man's first name, the one that was beside the Ball and Diner Burn near the Great Tannery. You can see Struthers Brewery on the, one of the, really the first pretty decent map of Glasgow dating to 1789, it's clearly marked, and you can also see just the other side of the Gallagate, the 
uh, Saracen's Head in. I think on that map it's just called the Saracen's Inn. Maybe they didn't have enough room for the word head. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Maybe it was called that then. You know. But um, when you compare that first map with the next decent map of the city dating to 1807, there is a slight difference in the shape of this rectangle of land bordered by Gallagate. Ross Street and the other two streets. It just looks, it's, the shape's slightly different, which makes me think that perhaps the whole block had been demolished between those two dates and, and rebuilt. I can't say for certain. And, you know, every time I wander around the barras and I wander down this particular street, Ross Street, and I look at that building there, that's the only, well, it's one of very few buildings in this street that has some age to it. You can see it from the, that one with the kind of modern curving top to it. And there's just a little part of me that wonders if perhaps that was once part of John Struthers Brewery. John Struthers Brewery was so successful that around 1800 he built a bigger brewery further east by the edge of Glasgow Green. And the brewery here in the Gallagate presumably then became unused. The new brewery was called the Greenhead Brewery, and the reason Struthers became so successful is of some considerable interest. In 1775, the previously mentioned Anderson Brewery hired a Nathaniel Shivers from London to teach them the art of porter brewing. He was hired in the understanding that he would not divulge the secret to any other brewers in Glasgow. However, after the expiry of his one-year contract, he then joined the Struthers Brewery in the Gallagate. Struthers brewed such good quality porter that their profits soared. It may well have been that same Nathaniel Shivers who then went over to Dublin to teach Arthur Guinness those same skills in the brewing of a dark stout or porter. So perhaps Glasgow had a great tasting Guinness like stout or porter before Dublin. Of course, I can't possibly end a video about uh, old brewers in Glasgow, or brewers in old Glasgow, without at least mentioning J&R tenants right here in the Well Park Brewery. Like many of these early brewers, they started out as, as maltsters, supplying uh, malted barley to inns and taverns uh, for, for them to make their own uh, beer. But I think it was probably in the, the 18th century, like most of these old brewers, that they started brewing beer for themselves and supplied the beer, uh, not just the malted barley, to inns and taverns in Glasgow. And when you think about all the takeovers and closures that hit the brewing industry, especially around about the 1960s, when you just took another company over and almost instantly closed it down, um, it's pretty, um, pretty amazing, probably nothing short of a miracle that we still have the Well Park Brewery here and that it still brews the world famed Tenants Lager. I'm Eddie Burns. Bye for now.